Step inside any medieval structure that has survived centuries, a cathedral, a castle, or even a timber-framed house, and one thing becomes immediately clear. The wood is still intact. It hasn't crumbled, rotted, or warped like modern timber. How did medieval builders achieve this kind of longevity without synthetic chemicals or industrial coatings? The answer lies in a carefully guarded anti-rot method that relied on timing, natural materials, and precise treatment. Today we're going to uncover this medieval secret and show you how to use it in your own backyard projects to create wood that can endure rain, snow, insects, and the relentless march of time. Medieval craftsmen began by harvesting wood at the perfect moment. The journey to long-lasting timber began long before it was cut or shaped. Craftsmen selected trees based on species, age, and season. Hardwoods and softwoods, such as oak, pine, and spruce, were harvested during late winter or early spring, when sap levels were at their lowest. Wood with minimal sap, you see, naturally absorbed less moisture, making it less prone to rot. After felling, the timber was left to air dry slowly, sometimes for months or even years. This patient drying process allowed fibres to harden evenly, preventing cracking or warping and, well, providing a stable foundation for further treatment. For backyard builders, this means patience really pays off. Even a simple raised garden bed, outdoor furniture or shed benefits from starting with well-seasoned wood. Avoid rushing the drying process with direct heat or sunlight, which can, you know, compromise the timber's internal structure. Properly dried wood is the first step towards structures that last for decades. Once the timber was properly dried, medieval builders often used controlled charring to protect it. By lightly burning the surface, they created a thin carbonized layer that repelled moisture, insects and fungi. The inner wood remained strong and flexible, while the exterior acted as a natural barrier against decay. This technique was applied to everything from roof beams to wooden bridges, allowing timber to endure centuries of exposure. You know, you can replicate this technique today using a propane torch or even a small controlled fire. Just hold the flame close enough to blacken the surface without actually burning through, then brush away any loose soot. Charring works really well for things like fence posts, outdoor furniture, and raised garden beds, giving them a protective layer that, well, significantly extends their lifespan. Charring alone wasn't enough. Medieval craftsmen also treated wood with natural oils and resins, most notably pine tar, which was extracted from slowly burning pine wood or resin. This substance penetrated deep into the fibres, creating a water-resistant barrier while also acting as a natural antiseptic. In some cases, multiple coatings were applied over weeks to ensure full absorption. The treated timber could endure rain, snow and high humidity without deteriorating, often lasting centuries. In backyard projects, pine tar linseed oil or tongue oil can be used in the same way. 
Just warm the substance slightly and rub it deep into the wood fibers, paying special attention to surfaces exposed to water or heavy use. This treatment works on raised beds, fences, outdoor furniture, and even firewood, giving them the same longevity that medieval builders relied on for their structures. Even the best treated wood can fail if it's poorly assembled. Medieval builders understood the importance of joinery in preventing rot. Boards were overlapped, joints were angled, and wooden pegs were used to distribute stress evenly. Flat surfaces where water could collect were avoided, and timber was allowed to expand and contract naturally. When combined with charring and oiling, thoughtful joinery ensured that structures remained strong and decay-resistant for decades or centuries. For backyard builders, this means designing slightly angled garden beds, overlapping boards in sheds, and spacing furniture components to encourage water drainage. Pairing these design techniques with treated timber dramatically improves the durability of any outdoor project. Imagine, if you will, building a garden shed using softwood that's been harvested in winter, slowly air-dried, then lightly charred, and finally coated with pine tar. That shed, you see, will resist sun, rain, snow and pests for far longer than untreated wood ever could. Even firewood stored using these methods stays dry and decay-free, giving you reliable fuel for years to come. Outdoor furniture, fencing and raised beds all benefit from these medieval techniques, transforming ordinary timber into heirloom-quality material that can withstand the elements. Medieval anti-rot methods weren't mystical. They were born from observation, patience, and a deep understanding of natural materials. Applying these principles today allows you to build wood projects that resist decay, avoid chemical treatments, and achieve a level of durability modern builders often fail to match. By embracing medieval techniques, seasonal harvesting, slow drying, controlled charring, natural oiling, and intelligent joinery, you're not just constructing structures. You're connecting with centuries of craftsmanship and ingenuity. Whether you're a history enthusiast, a survivalist, or, you know, someone who simply wants long-lasting natural wood in your backyard, these methods provide a practical, timeless solution. If you found this guide valuable, do subscribe to our channel for more historical insights and practical backyard wisdom. Share this video with fellow enthusiasts so the medieval approach to rot-proofing can, well, inspire backyard projects around the world. Apply these lessons today and you'll see how ordinary timber can survive rain, snow, pests and centuries of use, just like it did in medieval times.